One of the first places I always check when I'm looking at a site, especially an e-commerce site, is the sitemap. You can always find this if there is one inside the robots.txt file. This is interesting because, you know, it says here's the sitemap link. We can go to it and it will take you to another link. I'll show you here, here's the e-commerce one. I've already loaded this up here and it's over here, right? So now this has every link to every product on this website in it uh, because it's designed for good bots to pass through. So what is a good bot? Well, if we come to Cloudflare here, you know, search engine bots, web crawlers or spiders, crawl or review the content, uh, voice every site, blah, blah, blah. So I guess I'm not doing it for a search engine purpose, but this is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and call myself a good bot and allow myself to use the sitemap to get the information. As we know, IP quality plays a large part in the scraping detection process. So it's vital to make sure you're using the highest quality proxies to avoid getting blocked. This video is sponsored by ProxyScrape, friends of the channel and the proxies that I use myself. We get access to high quality, secure, fast and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. My go-to is either geo-targeted residential proxies based on the location of the website or the mobile proxies as these are the best options for passing anti-bot protection on sites and with auto rotation or sticky sessions along with the python package i'm going to talk about just in a minute this is a great first step to avoid being blocked it's still only one line of code to add to your project and then we can let proxy scrape handle the rest and also any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need it doesn't ever expire so if this all sounds good to you go ahead and check out proxy scrape at the link in the description below Let's get back to the project. So what I'm going to build is something that I can uh, use to pass the sitemap, search for some text, maybe like this, for example, this, this term here, and then go ahead and get all the data from the product pages. Now, these product pages are quite detailed. There's a lot going on on here, on here and it can be quite... Um, uh, quite daunting to try and pass this out. But what I always tend to do is I always come to the source for the page for the data that I want and have a look for a schema. And down here we have the uh, schema right here. Now this is gonna have some or all of the information depending on how the website works. This one just has most of it, which for my purpose is gonna be good enough. So what I did is I came to, I copied this out, I came to the JSON parser online and under here we can see this is all nice and neatly formatted JSON data with all the sorts of information that I want from this page. You know, the link, the name, the description, there's a SKU somewhere under here, and also, you know, some the pricing information, et cetera, et cetera, all of the good stuff that I want to do. So to go ahead and get this information, we wanna have a look at a few different things. First, we wanna understand how we're gonna pass the actual sitemap. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy the sitemap link here, and I'm gonna open up a, a terminal, I'm gonna curl the sitemap. Uh, not the source of it. And I'm going to get access denied. Now this is because we are not sending the a good TLS fingerprint. Um, so it's recognizing that this is coming from a direct request via curl rather than something that matches more like what they're expecting. I did a whole video on TLS fingerprinting, which I will link to. Very interesting to read about and learn about. But essentially what we want to do is we need to use a Python library called curl CFFI. So I'm going to do import, I need to do from curl. I'm just doing it as a, as a demonstration. We're going to code this all out. I'll show you the code in a minute. Uh, we're going to import requests. And then from here, I'm going to say my URL is the sitemap URL. Now I can do response is equal to requests.get on the URL. And if I do this and hit response.status code, I'll move this into the screen a bit more. Hang on. We're going to get 403 and that's being blocked. But if I do the same request with impersonate is equal to Chrome 124, I think is the latest version it does. Nope, let's do 116. There we go, and I do response.status code. I'm sure it does 114, I get a 200. So this is the sort of thing that you need to bear in mind when you're looking at trying to, um, trying to scrape a site like this one. But the problem is, is that if you go on to any kind of like the standard tutorials, you're going to get confused because it's going to say, I'll take the URL, make a request to it with requests, then pass out the data with Beautiful Soup. And that's just not 
the case for a lot of sites these days. You really need to do a little bit more investigation and figure out where the data is that you want to get, what it looks like, how you're actually going to get it, because you know that's the hardest part. Once you've got the information downloaded onto your computer, it's up to you. It's not that difficult to pass through and get what you need. You could even use AI to help you, but AI is only going to help you with that part, and only if you have loads of different sorts of sites and pages. Otherwise, don't bother with it. Now we've got an idea of what we're going to do. We need to pass the sitemap. I'm going to use a parcel, which is the Scrapey, um, Scrapey's um, uh, HTML and XML parser. I usually use Selectolax, which is CSS parser, which I like a lot, but it doesn't do XML. So we're going to be using XPath, XML, and parcel here. So uh, let's go ahead and start to code this out, and I'll show you. We're going to code maybe 70 odd lines, and it's going to be dead easy. So I have my uh, my main.py file open here, and we're going to import in what we need. We're going to be using curl CFFI, which is what I just showed you through my terminal. I'm going to use rich to print. Always use rich to print. Just makes it nice and easier. And that's parcel that I showed you. And then we're going to use JSON and data classes and OS, because I'm going to be using my proxy scrape proxies, which I have saved as an environment variable on my machine. So with the OS module in Python, I can pull that in. So I'm going to create a search term. This is going to be something that I'm going to use to filter the links that come back from the sitemap. Because otherwise, you know, if you want all of them, they'll all be there. But maybe we just want to target certain products that match something. So this is just going to be a search term that's going to match the links in the sitemap. So I'm going to create a data class for the product, which is going to have this information in it here. Usual stuff. It's all available. I checked it, what it was in the schema. This is just what I want out for that case. So the next thing that I want to do is thinking about how I'm going to get these URLs from this sitemap. I'm going to create a function that's going to make a request, again, using impersonate and my proxy. And then I'm going to pass the text from that, which is my sitemap text with all the links in it into this uh, cell SEL class with the selector here. Sorry, the SEL variable with the selector class. Then I'm going to remove namespaces. This is an XML specific thing. I haven't done a load of XML parsing, but um, I just quickly looking through the documentation on Parcel shows that you need to do this to basically have better access to the data. And then I've done a nice uh, um, comprehension here to get all of the URLs. From here, I'm just going to return them out. So this is going to be every link that was on that um, uh, sitemap, um, the top level link rather than the individual ones. Because if I come back to it here, actually, it's worth looking. You can see we have this one, and then you have all of the links underneath, which are the alternate ones for the different regions. I just want the main one. Then I'm going to create my function, my helper function, to extract the text from the URL if it matches the search that I've got in here. Again, short list comprehension, nice and simple function. If that word is in the URL, we're going to return it out. This is what I've got now. I'm going to go ahead and go to that URL, and I'm going to pull the data from that page, and I'm going to grab it and put it into a variable. Uh, so what I've got here is, um, the again, making a request to the page that I'm going to take, pulling out the HTML, and this is the XPath selector for that tag where that schema JSON is. Um, this is important um, because this is uh, this is all done in one line on XPath. As you can see here, we're getting the text. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is just removing the ats. So if I go back to the JSON parser here, you'll see that it's got all this at symbol in front of the keys. That's a bit of a pain. So all I'm doing is just removing that as we go. So that's pretty much the main functions that I'm going to be using. It's very simple, making a request to the server, getting the information back. Again, we have to use impersonate. Uh, Chrome does work with this. I must have an older version installed on my global namespace. Uh, so yeah, we're going to use impersonate. Otherwise, you're going to get blocked. And again, proxies. I just always use a proxy whenever I'm making requests. I just don't know why you wouldn't, so I always do. So I have my main function here now. So we're getting all the URLs from the sitemap page, and we're going to pull them out and extract the text. And then I'm just basically printing out the URLs that I'm getting back. Now, there's a case, obviously, where if we have a search term which doesn't exist in any of the URLs, we'll have that list will come back as empty or none. So I'm going to say, if the list is greater than 0, and then I'm going to loop through each and every single one of them. Now, in some of these links, there was uh, they were collection page links. Now, obviously, I want product page links, not collection page links. So I basically just remove them if their collection was not in there. Then I load that string from that schema page 
into a data variable via JSON. So we have now a nice JSON, file, uh, JSON object, which is essentially the same as a Python dictionary that we can interrogate and pull our data out and load into our product, just like this. So I'm using a data class. I always tend to use something like that rather than just um, just a plain dictionary. Although there's nothing wrong with a plain dictionary. I always err on the side of using a data class because although in this case, it's probably not that important, should I come back to this or want to expand on it, it's nice to know that my data is all in that nice handy data class or maybe even a Pydantic uh, class base model, something like that, rather than just raw dictionaries being passed around. So if I needed to do something in this product, like I could always just call dot product, product.url, product.description, et cetera, et cetera. Just, you know, I think it's better. Then I'm just going to print the product out, and if the list is um, this is the else for the list. I'm just going to go no matches. And then we have if name is equal to main, we're going to run it. Uh, I don't need that one there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this. I'm going to clear it up from my test run earlier. And we're going to do Python 3 main.py. Now I did create a models for earlier because I was thinking about expanding on this, decided not to. So all I'm going to do is go through, pull out the data from each product page, which match that thing. Again, using my proxy, nice and quick. No real issues here. Um, it's everything being handled for me. I'm just printing the data out. You know, you could do whatever you wanted with this data. Data classes will go to anything that you want, tuples or you know, dis uh, dictionaries, whatever you need. And this is how easy it can be to pull information. Now on this specific site, we didn't quite get all of the information because there's variants, there's different colors and different sizes. That would need a little bit more investigation, but you know, for a simple kind of like, here's the product information, Here's what you can get. This is still kind of useful if you're doing some kind of research or if you're doing some kind of market analysis. You've got a good good idea of what's being sold. Um, you, know, you can find all of their things that match this term, for example. It's a good way of doing things. Let's just go back to the code real quick. So again, this is very indicative to quite a lot of the basic web scrapers that I write. They are not very long. They are quite short. The longest and hardest part is finding out how to get the data and where from. I always try and do the easiest way possible. If I can avoid passing any HTML, like you know, trying to get through different selectors, I absolutely will, especially when most sites like this one, if there's any kind of server-side rendering, there's gonna be some kind of schema, it's gonna have the information in. So always look through that first. And if you need to, um, check the robot.txt file. There's usually a sitemap or it's just sitemap.xml. It's gonna have a load of links in it which are gonna make your life so much easier. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, you're gonna watch this video next where I talk more about the TLS fingerprinting and why I needed to do this and why I needed to use this package rather than just request or HTTPX. So go watch that one next.